Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Steven and I'm a future first year dental student. This is going to be mastering DAT cube counting part two, which is the second part to the three part series of exactly what it says, mastering DAT cube counting. This is the method that helped me receive a 23 on the perceptual ability test on DAT. And as I said, in part one, cube counting was sort of a, a good place that I thought to start with perceptual ability tutorials. And so yeah, we'll get right into the second part. And today we're gonna learn how to manage our sides that we've already counted and how to basically go through some sort of low level, kind of entry level problems that will get you on the path to doing really, really well on this section. Cool, jumping right into it. Here we are on part two. And like I said, we're gonna start out with side management. So in part one, I taught you how to actually count the sides and sort of how to approach looking at cubes that you maybe can't see or sides that you can't see. And we counted a bunch of sides, but how do you keep track of the sides that you've already counted. I remember when I first started doing cube counting problems, I got really stuck with counting a bunch of cubes and then forgetting what I had already counted and basically not being able to keep track of what I had already gone through. And the entire DAT and perceptual ability specifically being a very time sensitive test, you need to be as efficient as you can with the time. So this right here, side management, is going to be a great way to keep track of what you've already done as you move through these problems on the test. So this is in my opinion, the best way to keep track of what you've done. And it's to basically draw a little table that looks just like this. This is a super simple table. You just need one straight line here and then these lines right here. And you're gonna write out zero, one, two, three, four, and five. And the reason that you do this is so that as you run through each cube, you can make a tick mark for what that cube had painted. So if for example, a, a cube had two sides painted, you would give it a tick mark in the two. If it had three, you'd give it a three. And you do all this in groups of five like that. In the end, when you're, at, when you're answering the actual questions, all you have to do is quickly go back and check this table and you're gonna have all of the sides marked all ready to go and you're gonna breeze right through the questions themselves. So why don't we go ahead and put this into practice with some examples and this is the actual way that you will see the questions on the DAT itself. So right here, we're gonna go right into it. This is um, just a basic question on, in cube counting and the question is how many cubes have three sides painted? And in the DAT, you're going to see a question like this. It will give you a figure and then it'll ask you about, let's say three sides, four sides, two sides, that sort of thing. But in these examples, we will just do one side, so three sides in this, in this example. And now I have to tell you before we start how to actually count the cubes, the order that you count the cubes, because it matters. I always like to start in the front corner right here. And then I like to move back and then to the right. And the reason that I think this is important is because it allows you to be very consistent with the way you count cubes so that as you go through the questions, you're always gonna have a consistent method that you can sort of, once again, cut down on the, on the time that it's taking you to do these questions. So yeah, I like to start there at the front and then work back and then to the left. So what we're gonna do is just go ahead and start counting sides. And as we do so, we're gonna fill out our little table that's over here to this side. So as we did in part one, we're gonna begin counting sides. Here we are, we are at one, two, three. Tick mark for three sides. One, two, three on the back side there another tick mark on three sides. One, two, three. There's another tick mark for three. Now we have a cube back here that we can't see, and that is going to have one because this side right here is butted up against this cube. So we'll go ahead and add a tick mark for one. Then moving once again to the left, we have one, two, three here on this right side and four on the back side. So that's a tick mark for four. And then here we have a free floating cube, which you'll see those get common. You can do them really quickly. It's gonna be five sides, but there's one, two, three, four here on the right and five on the back. So there's a tick mark for five. Then we will go up, which I didn't mention before, but once we get one row on the bottom, we'll go up. And this free floating cube, if I can just erase some of this junk, we're gonna have one, two, 
three here on the right, four, five on the back, and that is another tick mark for five. So this question asked us how many cubes have three sides painted? We're gonna reference our table real quick and we see that three cubes have three sides painted. Our answer is going to be three. Moving on to the next question, this one is how many cubes have four sides painted? Here we have one, two, three. There's a tick mark for three. Here we have one, two on the back side, three on the right side. So this cube down here has three sides painted. Then we're gonna move to the right. One, two, three, four. Here on this right side, four. So there is a tick mark for four. Moving back towards the back of the figure, we have a top here and a back side, which we can't see, so that's two sides. So there's two sides accounted for. Once again, moving to the right, we have one, two, and nothing else is visible on this cube. So there's two sides, so we'll go ahead and do a tick for two. And then this cube back here, we have one, two, back side, three. There's a tick for three. Moving to the right, we have one, two, three, right side, four. There's a tick for four. There is a cube below this cube right here. And that's down there. And that's gonna have one side painted. So here is one, and that's just the right side. There's also a cube down here below this cube. And so that is going to have a right side painted, which once again, hard to represent, but this is the point of the perceptual ability and the cube counting is being able to see a cube that's not actually there. But there's one and then it would have a back side two. So there's a two tick mark. Now we're gonna go back over to this side of the figure and we're gonna go up. Here's our first cube on this next level. One, two, right side three, back side four. There's a tick for four. We'll move over here to the left and we'll get this cube, one, two, three, right side, four. There's another tick for four. Back over to the left side of the figure. And I know this seems like a lot of movement through the figure, but trust me, when they get bigger, it's good to do this. One, two, three here on the right side, four on the back side, and five up top. There's a tick for five. And then I actually should have counted this cube a second ago, but I didn't. So this one is gonna be one, two, three on the right side, four on the back side. So another tick, a fifth tick mark for four. So our question was how many side, or how many cubes have four sides painted? We go to our table and we have five sides painted. That is our answer right there, beautiful. How many cubes have two sides painted? So here, starting again in the bottom corner, we're gonna have one, two, back side, is three, right side four. There's four sides there. And then we'll go over this way and we'll count this one. There's gonna be one here, two here, and three on this side, which would be look something like that. So there's a third face, which you can't see. So there's, thir there's three. There's a cube under this cube right here. So it would be sort of in this region. And since it's free floating in its own area, it's gonna have a side over here, a side on the back, and a side over here. So yeah, these are the tough ones to count, but you have to know that it's there because this cube can't be supported by air. It has to be supported by a cube. So we've got one side over here, two on the back, three on this right side. There's a tick mark for three. Moving over, one, two, three, four. Tick mark for four. Back, one, two. Tick mark for two. Over to the right, one. Nothing else is showing. There's a tick mark for one. Back behind it, we're going to have a free floating cube here. So it's gonna be one, two, back side three, and right side four. So once again, this is just being able to see that that cube is sort of floating alone. And you just have to get used to counting those sides. So that's four. On this cube, it's going to be one, two, and then back side three. So the reason that there's a backside three is even though we have a cube right here, we don't necessarily have a cube to its right. So we're gonna count three sides for that one and we will put a tick there for three. Now we'll move up one, two on this side, three, four. So that's front, right side, left side, top. Excuse me, we also have a backside. So this is top here and back here. And by the way, I wouldn't like draw all over the, um, I mean, this is gonna be on the computer, so you're not gonna be able to draw all over them. I'm just doing that so that you can see them. 
um, because it does make it confusing. So that's going to be five sides, tick mark there. Back over to this one, this cube I could tell you as well is a five-sided cube um, just because it's sitting on top of another one. So give it a nice five tick. And now we'll move back over here to the right and count this cube. We have one, two, back side three. So there's a tick for three. Now we have one, two on the right side and three on the back side. So another tick for three. There's our fifth three tick. And now we have one, two, three, four back side. One, two, right side, three back side. Six. And our final cube in this one is a top side cube. So remember, we're looking straight down on it. One, two, three, four, and back side five. So as I said before, if it's on the top, it's gonna be a five sided cube. So there's our fifth tick for that one. And the question asked how many cubes have two sides painted? And that's gonna be just as we see here, one cube. But in a question like this, you would be asked how many have three sides painted and how many have five, for example. So you would give more answers for all the things you counted. Moving down to this example, on this one, I'm gonna try to not draw as much. So hopefully you guys are getting a little bit more comfortable with the counting process. And of course, go ahead, pause the video and try it yourself. And then I will walk through it and you can see if you got it right. So starting here, we've got one, two, three, four. One, one. And I have to look at this one to make sure because this one is the third row here which is in this same row right there, but it only would have the one side. So that is one. Here we have one and then a back side two. One, two, three, four on that other back side, which you can't see. Moving over, one, two. Behind that one, it would just be a one, which is way down here somewhere. One, one, back side two. One, two, three, Four. Moving up, one, two, three, one, one, two, right side, three. Moving over, one, two, right side, three, back, one, two, one, two, right side, three, back side, four. Moving up, one, two, three, four. One, back side two, right side three. And then our final cube is a top cube here. One, two, three, right side four, back side five. Our question asks us how many cubes have three sides painted? So the answer to this one is four. And the final example today is this doozy and we're going to be looking for the four sides painted. So here we go, get right into it. Also, the orientation of this one is a little bit different. So now you can see we're looking at the cubes from this sort of angle as opposed to what we had up here, which was this angle. But that's not going to change how we approach it. We're going to do it the same way. So here we go. One, two, three on this left side, four on the back side. Over one, two, three. Behind that one is going to be one and two on the back side. Here we're going to have one, two, three, four. Below it, we're gonna have nothing. Behind that one, we're gonna have a one-sided cube. Moving over, one, two. Below that, we have nothing, nothing exposed. And behind that, we have one side, two side. So a nice two side there. Over to the right, one, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. Now we're going back over to the left, up one. This is a top cube, so one, two, three, four, and five. Sides painted. Over this way, one, two, three on the back side there. Here, one, two, three, four. Over here, we've got one side, two side, three side. So there's our fifth check mark for three. Here we have one, two, back side three, and this left side four. And then we'll go back over here and we'll go up. So we've got this cube, one, two, three, four backside. One, two, three backside. One, two, three, four, and five. So with that doozy out of the way, the question said, how many have four? 
We have five tick marks here, so we know the answer to this question is five. Guys, that was part two of this DAT cube counting series. And this one, really, we, we gained a lot of ground here because these are some high level examples, probably medium to high level examples of what we're gonna be seeing on the DAT. And if you're able to pause the video and go through and get these right, you are really in great shape for this section. In part three, we're gonna take it a step further and pretty much, like I say, master it. That's gonna be all high level examples. And we're gonna get to the point where we really are good at doing this. Also in part three, we're going to be doing actual DAT type questions where we're gonna have each figure is gonna have three questions. So you'll see what that is when you see part three. So stay tuned for part three um, and check it out. You'll be able to finish out the series and master it. And you guys, like I said last time, are going to really, really do well in this section. The perceptual ability is a little bit underrated. Um, I think people don't necessarily consider it to be as important as it truly is. This is the way that committees see that you are going to be able to perceive things when you're a dentist. Being able to cut a crown and see all the margins and everything that you need to see. These are all skills that you need to have. The ability to see a cube that isn't there is important and it doesn't maybe seem like that at first, but it truly is. So yeah guys, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and comment below how you're doing, how the studying is going, and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're interested in this type of content, more tutorials, and more things surrounding the life of getting into dental school and moving into dental school as I go along and do it myself. Thank you guys as always for watching and stay tuned for part three where we will finish out this series. Have a wonderful day and good luck studying.